Thanks for joining us as we continue our coverage of the search and rescue operation from a sunken ferry of Korea's southwest. It's Sunday, April 20th here in Seoul, and I'm Choi yoo -sun. The government has just declared the two affected areas by the accident the special disaster zones. One is in Ansan in Gyeonggi-do province near the capital Seoul, and the other is on Jindo Island in the southwestern Jeollanam-do province. For more details, we go to our Nayeon Gyeong standing by at the news center. Hyun Gyeong. Oh, the government has designated uh, those two areas, as you mentioned, Yusun, as a special disaster zones. Ansan is where Tanwon High School is, the high school where most of the student passengers on the ferry were from. And Jindo Island is where the Pengmokang Harbor is, uh, the nearest harbor from the sunken ferry. With the government's approval, the two areas will be able to swiftly receive state funds for the rescue and surge operations. Also, local taxes, including acquisition and registration taxes, Taxes will be waived. Other general taxes will be either reduced or the payment deadline will be postponed for up to nine months. Financial assistance to the victims and their families will be made, as well as to those that are still waiting for their loved ones to return. Now, this is uh, the seventh time the Korean government has designated special disaster zones. Past cases include the collapse of the Sampung Department in uh, 1995, which resulted in 1,000. 445 casualties and a major oil spill in Tan County in the country's west coast in 2007, which caused more than $700 million worth of financial damage. Hyun earlier in the afternoon, the transcript and audio file of what was communicated between the sinking Sewol Ferry and the Mar Marine Traffic Control Center for the area have been made public. Uh, yes, that's right, Yusan. They were released. But what people are wondering now is why the crew members left the sinking ferry before uh, the passengers on board. Let's take a listen. <laughs> It's uh, difficult to make out what the two sides are saying exactly, but what is evident is that the situation sounds uh, quite urgent. Uh, now, the released transcript shows that the control center first contacted the sinking ferry at 9.06 a.m. Wednesday. They contacted each other 11 times uh, and communicated for 31 minutes. You can see at 9.12 a.m., the ferry was already severely tilted, and the crew member who was uh, talking to the control center already knew that the people on board were not able to move. And at around 9.25 a.m., the control center told the ferry to decide whether to order passengers to abandon the vessel since it didn't know the situation uh, there. But the ferry said it was unable to make announcements because its speaker system was down by that time. The last time the two made contact was at 9.37 a.m., during which the ferry told the control tower that only the people who were able to escape to the left side of the ferry were able to leave the vessel. Hyunggyung, do they know who was communicating from the ferry? Oh, well, they say a senior crew member was apparently contacting the control tower from the sinking ferry, but uh, whether the captain was in the steering room is still unknown. Captain Lee jun Suk is facing tremendous criticism for escaping the ship before the passengers. So what we need more information on is whether the captain indeed uh, uh, neglect his duty by not promptly notifying the passengers about the situation during uh, that 30-minute uh, time frame.
And I hear prosecutors launched their own investigation into the accident. Uh, that's right. Prosecutor General Kim Jin Tae ordered an investigation into the Sewolho ferry operator, the Cheongyejin Marine Company. The prosecution, sa uh, the prosecution rather says the decision was made because the disaster occurred uh, possibly due to a failure in management. Prosecutors plan to uh, require the operator to take responsibility for the accident if that is the case. They say this investigation will. Will be carried out separately, as you mentioned, Yuzun, from the one that the joint investigation team is currently conducting. Travel bans have been imposed on uh, two largest shareholders of the operator, including a male surnamed Yu and the president of the company. Uh, his name is Kim Han Shik. Yuzun? All right, thank you, Hyungyang, and please do keep us updated. When an accident occurs, there is a window of time when the chance of survival is the highest. For many on board the Sewolho ferry, that window was shut tight while waiting inside the vessel while help was right outside. Our Shin Se-min reports. The first 30 minutes to an hour of a disastrous accident is called the golden time. It is a period of time in which crucial decisions must be made in order to ensure a better chance of survival for those in peril. As more information comes out about the ill-fated Sewolho ferry and the events directly after its accident, the more it seems that those in charge, that those responsible for making sure everyone on board were safe, were derelict in their duties. The message says, please contact the maritime police. The ship is in danger and it is listing. It was made at 8.55 a.m. Wednesday from the now sunken ferry. And it was the first and the only call for help. Three minutes later, the police report an official distress situation of the ferry. And two minutes after that, 9 a.m., an announcement tells passengers to say where they are inside the ferry. Half an hour later, a hundred or so naval and civilian ships descend on the ferry's location to help with the unfolding crisis. The first rescue helicopter arrives at the scene at around 9.40 a.m. and the rescue team is dispatched. But passengers in the Sewolho ferry were told to stay put inside their cabins. At 10.25 a.m., the passenger ferry has listed over 90 degrees and within an hour, it has completely capsized. In the critical time directly after the ferry encountered trouble, the captain and crew hesitated to deploy lifeboats. If they had stayed on board to save those they were responsible for, this might very well be a different story today, a story of survival instead of monumental tragedy. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. Rescue teams have uh, retrieved more, more bodies from inside the hull of the ferry on this Sunday. Unfortunately, it looks like we can expect the death toll to rise even more in the coming hours and days. And let's go live to our Chi Myung-il now at Pengmokang Harbor, the focal point of the search and rescue operations. Myung-il, there's been no news of survivors, but more bodies have been retrieved, correct? Yes, Susan. two bodies have been retrieved just three hours ago, in addition to dozens of bodies found earlier in the day. The two were identified as male students, and their bodies are on their way to the Pengmokang Harbor. And their DNA samples will be taken. The death toll currently stands at 58. We've been seeing boat after boat come in from the capsized Herald of Ferry throughout the day. But unfortunately, there are only bodies and no survivors. Hundreds of family members of the victims are camping out here, and their maritime minister paid a visit to check on the rescue operations. Several tents have been set up here, and this is where DNA samples are taken from the families and the bodies that come in before the bodies are transferred to nearby hospitals. We also had some more tragic news. A Navy sailor who was taking part a Navy sailor who was taking part in the rescue operation had died. Tragedy on top of more tragedy, Myungil. We can Myungil? Well, uh, we continue yeah. to hold out yes, hope that's that... Tr yes, that's true, Yusan. We have seen some progress.
We hope that more survivors will be found. Myungil, how is the rescue operation there proceeding? Can you tell us about that? Yes, user, we have seen some progress in the search and rescue operations throughout the day. Five guidelines have been attached to the vessel, which allows the divers to get new routes into the ferry. This allows them to carry out their rescue operation in tandem with the other operations. About 200 ships, 34 aircraft and nearly 600 divers have been taking part in the search operation today. The weather worked in favor of the rescue operation, but the wind is picking up. Four days have passed since the Seoul ferry went down, and some are now saying that it will be a miracle if any survivors can be rescued. Well, we're all holding out hope for some good news, which has been so hard to come by in recent days here in Korea. That was our Tim Young-gil reporting live from Pengmokong Harbor near the ferry disaster site. Rescue teams on the scene had to hoped to use underwater vehicles to help locate victims of the Sewolho ferry disaster, but strong tidal currents and limited visibility have made that very difficult. Now, Pak Ji-wan tells us more about some of the devices divers could use to assist their efforts. This is a remotely operated underwater vehicle called the Hemide, developed by the Korea Institute of Ocean Science and Technology. This unmanned vehicle can dive up to 6,000 meters to the bottom in the sea and move at a speed of about 2.8 kilometers per hour. This multifunctional deep submergence vehicle is equipped with robotic arms, a diverse set of measuring instruments, and an underwater camera. Some question whether this state-of-the-art unmanned underwater vehicle can provide any help in the ongoing rescue operations of the Sewolho Ferry. However, experts say the vehicle was developed for the purpose of deep-sea exploration, where currents are not very strong. The tidal current speeds near the Sewol accident site are about 8 kilometers per hour. The propulsion of the underwater vehicle needs to be at least twice that. Another piece of equipment that could help is this so-called diving bell, which provides an air pocket where divers can breathe. Deployed near divers, it can lengthen the amount of time they can stay underwater. Divers now have to wait for the currents to stop because strong tidal currents have been hampering their operations. This can be a shelter for divers, and divers can continue dives for 20 hours. The establishment of systemic technology support by revamping remotely controlled submergence vehicles and innovative diving technology is ever the more urgent to save lives during maritime disasters. Park Ji-won, Arirang News. It's been the independent rescue divers who have made progress toward locating the bodies of the victims underwater. Leading authorities admit that independent divers are more capable than their Navy or Coast Guard counterparts. There's a growing chorus of criticism blaming the government for not cooperating enough with independent divers from the very beginning of the search. Our Park se has the details. The divers who successfully pumped air into the sunken Seolho ferry and entered the second deck to search for survivors were neither Navy nor Coast Guard divers. They were divers working for private companies. Currently, hundreds of private divers are helping out in the rescue operations, and the Coast Guard admits that these divers are better. We have to say that divers from private companies are more able to search the ship underwater and also in rescue operations. The other advantage they have is the quality of their equipment. Private divers are using remote-controlled submersibles and other high-tech gear that allow them to communicate and breathe at the same time. This equipment, experts say, is far more developed than used by the Navy. Families awaiting news on their missing loved ones are demanding to know why private divers have not actively been taking part in each and every stage of the search and rescue operation. They point to what they say is a lack of cooperation between the Navy and the Coast Guard and the private divers from the very beginning of the search. Park Se-kyung, Arirang News. 
The families of those missing from the sunken Sewolho ferry have been congregating at an auditorium near the accident site in Chindo. This is the fifth day of what has been an agonizing time for all of them. Our Hwang Jie now joins us live from the auditorium. Chihe, what's the situation there like? Howls of horror and cries of grief have been heard here at the Tindo Auditorium as hopes are falling for finding more survivors with divers pulling out bodies. Um, survivors are still, many of them are still trapped inside the ship and some people have collapsed here while others have headed to Pengmo Harbor to see the site with their own eyes. Medical personnel are on 24-hour standby here in what is a very tense and agonizing environment. Anger toward the government is mounting among the families here. They're saying the rescue operation is proceeding too slowly. Some are taking to the stage to make speeches about their increasing frustration. Rumors are also spreading about among families here about how how the bodies are being handled, with some saying the bodies are not being treated properly. Tia, we hear that Prime Minister Chong Hong Wan has had a discussion with the families about the idea of refloating the ferry using cranes. How did that talk go? Yes, the Prime Minister held closed do closed door meetings with representatives of the families, and there the families said they want rescue operations to continue. They said they hope that using cranes to refloat the sunken ferry will be the last option employed, just in case there are survivors. Overnight, hundreds of the relatives tried to march across a bridge in Jindo to the mainland to take their protest to the capital's hall. Their final destination was the presidential office. They once confronted the police that tried to stop them, citing safety reasons. Yusan. All right, Chia, thank you for that report, and please do keep us updated in our next newscast. When bodies are recovered, they go through a series of identification procedures to speed up the process to help identify the deceased. Medical staff have begun collecting DNA samples from the families of the missing. Kim Minji has the details. When bodies are recovered, the first procedure is to check the personal belongings of the victim and their physical appearance, such as their height. If the body is able to be identified, the family is contacted so they can confirm with their own eyes. If the body cannot be identified, the body is sent to a nearby hospital for examination, which includes taking DNA samples and fingerprint identification. Blood tests and biopsies are taken if the recovered body has been severely damaged. However, with fears of a sudden rush of bodies being recovered at once and complaints that the procedures have been inefficient, medical experts have begun collecting DNA samples from relatives of the missing passengers. Tents to collect DNA have been set up beside the auditorium where many families of the missing passengers have been spending sleepless nights, as well as at the Pengmokang Harbor near the site of the accident. While rescue divers are putting in great efforts to search for survivors and recover bodies, the time that has passed and the harsh conditions at sea can now make it difficult to identify the bodies. Almost 90 percent of relatives of the missing have registered their DNA. Although they are still clinging on to hope their loved ones are still alive, some are preparing for the worst. My wife still wants to believe our child will come back alive, but looking at the situation now, I just hope our child's body comes back soundly at least. With unfavorable weather and harsh conditions at sea hampering rescue efforts, the physical and mental health of the families are also deteriorating by the minute. I took care of my niece for 11 years. I'm so upset. I told her to have a safe trip and she said yes. Since then, I've heard nothing. Navy officials say the DNA samples will be analyzed as soon as possible. The DNA samples will be sent to the National Forensic Center to see if they match with the victims. Kim min Airang News.
candlelight vigils for the missing are being held throughout the nation as Korea waits for a miracle. We have our Connie Kim standing by at one such event at Hwarang Park in Ansan. So Connie, tell us more about this particular candlelight vigil. Hi, Yusan. I'm standing by at a Hwarang Recreation Park here in Ansan. Now, Ansan is where Tanon High School is located, where more than 320 students from that school were on board the missing, or were on board the sunken Seoro ferry. Now, rows of people are gathered here. They're praying for their missing ones, uh, clinging on to their last hope that even one passenger can come back alive. Now, going into the fifth day of such a tragic accident, people are holding banners that read, wishing for their safe return. And as you can imagine, these friends and relatives have been spending sleepless nights and have come out on this rather chilly day. Now, as you can hear behind me, people are even praying. And although time is running out, with more bodies being retrieved in the waters off Chindo Island, the whole nation is still holding on to hope for their missing loved ones. Back to you, Yusan. All right, thank you, Connie, for that uh, report. The nation is united to share, if not all, the grief of the families who are desperate for more information about their missing loved ones. Some 5,000 volunteers from more than 240 private and religious groups are offering necessities and encouragement to the family members now waiting in anguish. Our Kim ji has this story. As days pass by, families who long for their loved ones are growing wary. In times of crisis like these, a warm meal and a helping hand are a great help. Volunteers from various relief organizations came to Shindo Island, where the sunken ferry is located and where family members are gathered to find more about their missing family members. A lot of families came rushing to site when they heard about the ferry incident. So we're trying to provide necessities while they wait to hear news of their loved ones. The health of the families is deteriorating as time goes by, as rescue operations are further being delayed. Medicine and medical supplies are running short. We'll provide medicine and medical supplies until the crisis recedes. We're planning to have a fundraiser so that we can keep renewing the supplies. The nation is being united in times of crisis. Kim ji Arirang News. The thoughts and prayers are not only coming from Korea. The hope for a miracle knows no borders. Messages of support and are pouring in from all around the world. Our Song ji reports. Please join me in praying for the victims of the ferry disaster in Korea and their families. This is what Pope Francis posted on his Twitter account this weekend. The Pope is due to visit Korea in August, becoming the first head of the Catholic Church to make the trip in 25 years. Pope Francis is just one of the countless people who are grieving for the victims of the capsized Seoro ferry around the globe. English Premier League football club Manchester United tweeted that, Our thoughts are with everybody affected by the ferry disaster in South Korea. Arsenal defender Per Mertesacker tweeted, my compassion to the families and people in Korea being affected from the Seoul accident, adding in Korean that he prays for a miracle. Ahead of her Korea tour next week, British singer Connie Talbot tweeted, she's leaving for Korea at such a sad time and said profits from the concert will be directed towards the ferry accident. Over in the Thai capital Bangkok at a prayer event hosted by Nation TV, Citizens flagged banners and signs with words of condolences and support for the Korean victims. On the other side of the globe, in downtown Boston, Korean students from Harvard University, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and Boston University prayed for the safe rescue of all that were aboard the Seoro ferry. Song ji Arirang News. Now we go over to our Kim Bogyang at the Weather Center. Bogyang, any updates on the weather on Chindo? 
You saw not much, but there's some relief that the coming Tuesday through Saturday is neap tide. This is when the speed of tidal currents are at their slowest and sea levels reach their lowest. So we should be able to proceed with rescue operations without much difficulty. At the moment, it's about 13.2 degrees on Chindo with light clouds. Conditions today on Chindo are a lot better compared to the past few days. Currently, visibility has opened up to 16.8 kilometers, but wind speed has gone up to 6.3 meters per second, which is approximately twice the speed compared to the recent hours. Otherwise, the waves remain fairly low at about 0.9 meters. Tomorrow, we will get four opportunities when the speed of tidal currents reach their slowest. That will be at 12.3 a.m., 7.19 a.m., 1.9 p.m., and 6.00 40 p.m. and that should continue for about an hour each time. The conditions on Jindo will uh, continue to remain cooperative through next week. As for tomorrow, the wave height should be at around 0.1 through 1 meters and winds should blow between 5 to 9 meters per second. Well, that's all the weather updates I have for Jindo at this hour and I'll be back with more in just about an hour. And that's all we have for you at this hour. Stay with us for more on day five of the sunken ferry recovery efforts in our next newscast at 9 p.m. Korea time.